Good morning, church. It's been a long time since I've recorded a video, um, but I'm honored to be able to share with you from the Gentle and Lowly book um, just some thoughts that I had as I uh, read chapter 11, which is the emotional life of Christ. Uh, the passage that, that it starts off with is John eleven thirty three, When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. Ever wonder what emotions are being described when we read deeply moved and greatly troubled? I'm grateful for what I learned uh, when I was reading this book. Uh, I want to read a couple of portions of the book to you. Um, pages 105 and 106, the author shares some thoughts from theologian B.B. Warfield. It says, The emotion which we should naturally expect to find most frequently attributed to that Jesus, whose whole life was a mission of mercy, and whose ministry was so marked by deeds of beneficence that is summed up in the memory of his followers as a going through the land doing good, is no doubt compassion. In point of fact, this is the emotion which is most frequently attributed to him. Ortland then shares this. The Greek word is splachnizo, which is often rendered as to have compassion. But the word denotes more than passing pity. It refers to a depth of feeling in which your feelings and longings churn within you. The other emotion that he talks about is anger. And so if you look at page 108, it says, we re, uh, it says, It would be impossible, therefore, for a moral being to stand in the presence of perceived wrong, indifferent and unmoved. Precisely what we mean by a moral being is a being perceptive of the difference between right and wrong, and reacting appropriately to right and wrong perceived as such. The emotions of indignation and anger belong therefore to the very self-expression of a moral being as such and cannot be lacking to him in the presence of wrong. I love the statement that he follows up with where he talks about um, compassion and anger rising and falling together. You can't truly feel one without feeling the other. And because of the depth, depth of Jesus' love and compassion, his righteous anger cannot be held back as he seeks justice. And that brings us back to the passage at the very beginning of the chapter, John eleven thirty three. 33. Let me read it again. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. Jesus approached the grave of Lazarus in a state not of uncontrollable grief, but irrepressible anger. The emotion which tore his breast and clamored for utterance was just rage. Jesus' response to Lazarus' death and the weeping of his sisters wasn't just driven by compassion, but also anger towards death and towards the enemy. I so want to handle situations like Jesus. One challenge I took away from this chapter was to be filled with compassion when I come across injustice and unfair treatment. That part I've got down. It's the second part, right? It's the anger. Um, to be angry without sinning without a taint of sin like Jesus is described in this book. That's something I'm, I'm still struggling with, especially the last few years with all that we've gone through, all that we've witnessed. It has been a struggle. That's been too much. But as I read this book, I needed to be reminded that Jesus loves us so much that it angers him when we suffer. It angers him when he sees injustice. He knows what, it's, what it feels like, right? He went through suffering. He suffered injustice. He knows what it's like, but thank God he's conquered it all. And so what I, what I took away and what I want to uh, encourage you with this morning is, although we'll continue to struggle, although we'll continue to suffer injustice and, and unfair treatment, we have to give it to him. We have to be so filled with forgiveness um, that we're willing to 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 let uh, to let God handle it, to let God take control, um, knowing uh, that His justice will prevail. So I hope that encourages you, um, encourages you to read the book. It's a deep book. Um, definitely have to read it more than once, um, but just truly encouraged by it. And I hope that this morning, um, what I've shared has been encouraging to you. Love you all, church. Take care.